Today we're in Oklahoma City to visit with Mark Bays. Mark is Urban Forestry Coordinator with the State Department of Agriculture's Forestry Services. And Mark, I understand Oklahoma City suffered a terrible storm in July. We really did. Uh, last week in July we had 97 mile an hour linear winds come through uh, Oklahoma City. And, and this neighborhood where we're at in the center part of the city seemed to get uh, quite a lot of the damage. Well, I can hear that they're doing a, a, a bit of work on the trees yeah, in the we're, background. Yeah, we're still recovering from it. And, and actually that brings up a great point now is a wonderful time for people to get out into their yards and really take a close look and see what kind of damage they had. The trees have lost their leaves, mm -hmm. so uh, you know some of the problems we're seeing back here on this yard is a lot of the branches have been snapped off and they're still hanging in the tree, mm -hmm. and that's something that we probably couldn't you know, have seen earlier in the year when the tree still had leaves. Do different trees behave differently in the storm depending on their shape or their species? Yeah, absolutely. There's probably a couple of different tree species that uh, you know we saw more damage with. But mm -hmm. if you look at the city as a whole, the things that we saw more so than that was the fact that the trees that sustained most of the damage were the ones that didn't have any maintenance on or were improperly pruned. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's really what we saw more so than just species specific. I think. Okay. Well, the, this backyard sure has some some good examples. Of that. Well, good or bad example. Yeah. <laughs> Depending <laughs> how you how you want to look at it. To do that. Uh, what so. happened here? Well, what happened here is we had this trunk here. Uh, this is a mimosa tree, and mm -hmm. uh, this side of the tree here actually snapped off. And uh, this is the thing that I'm probably more concerned about. Uh, uh, if you look at all the damage around the city, is is this is opening up this tree to all sorts of uh, insect problems, disease type problems, and then so if you have stumps like this, whether they're as big as this one or mm -hmm. even small ones like some of the ones that we saw earlier, uh, you probably need to do some corrective pruning on that. Okay, and you have some examples of what happens to trees that that have a natural dieback and and what happens internally, the things that we don't see normally. Right, you know, just at first glance, you can look at this branch right here and you can see that there's some dead branch right here, but the tree was beginning to seal over that wound. Mm -hmm. And that's just a natural process that the tree goes through. But if you look on the inside of that, you can see all the internal damage that's happening with that. Mm -hmm. The same thing's gonna happen on people's trees if they don't come back and do some target pruning and remove all those uh, snags that are in the branches and right. get them back to a, a, a branch collar on that tree. And you all have discussed many times, you know, what proper pruning practices are. Right. And, and it's just amazing, you know, like I said, first glance, doesn't appear to be the damage and you look on the inside there and there's an extensive amount of damage in that tree. Well what I found amazing as well is the uh, around the neighborhood here there are some trees that that were completely snapped over and broken off. Others such as a, a big elm in the front of this house that right. looks just fine. A lot of times you think of an elm as being somewhat vulnerable. I guess because we hear so much about Dutch elm disease. Right. But it was okay and so was the, the soap berry out in front. Now right. why was that do you think? Well the, the, the homeowner here actually the one big elm tree that you're talking about had it pruned two weeks prior and it was one of the only trees that were pruned on the property. Uh, it was one of their favorite trees so they had the arborists come out and, and work on that one mm -hmm. and that sustained little or no damage. Uh, and whereas the trees in the backyard here, they weren't ready to prune those, and that's where all the damage occurred. Oh, that's unfortunate then. The, there was one green ash tree in the front yard that had in, been improperly pruned earlier. It had been topped or rounded off. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those sprouts that came up off of that tree, uh, you know, they, they, they just faulted, and then uh, they lost a lot of the branches that way. Well, and that's certainly a testimony to why you should never have a tree top. You have some examples uh, in other areas of this backyard of a mimosa right. that had been topped. Right. And, the, uh, the mimosa tree that uh, is in the other side of this yard over here uh, it had been topped probably the same time as the one out front did, mm -hmm. and it recovered, you know, and it's a really good... Uh, uh, visual on, on what happens. If a tree is able to recover from that topping, it'll send up sprouts right it's where it's vigorous. topped. Yeah, it's real yeah. vigorous, but then those are weakly attached and, yes. and they strip off and that's where all the damage or the you know, the problems are going to occur. Okay, well fortunately uh, your office with the, the Department of Agriculture here in the state has fact sheets available on hiring an arborist and a pretty nice selection here of, of in pieces of information on avoiding tree and utility conflicts, all right. kinds of things. How can the homeowner get hold of this information? Well, what number can they call? They can call here in Oklahoma City, uh, area code 405. 
521-3864. Ask for forestry services, and we just have a multitude of uh, flyers that we'll send out talking all, about all different kinds of tree care, Great. hiring arborists, uh, maintaining mature trees, all that kind of information okay. available. And this is one final lesson that you need to make sure that you replant in your backyard. Yes. And last of all, uh, we want to mention that next week on Oklahoma Gardening, we're going to go to the chipping site, one of several chipping right. sites <laughs> in Oklahoma City where they've been handling this material and turning it into at least a usable form that, so that it can go back on landscapes. And Mark will join you there next week. And Great. hopefully you viewers will be back with us next week and join us again on Oklahoma Gardening. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.